I am super excited about a new class of medicine being developed in MS. We're talking about the BTK inhibitors, and I literally think they may be the next best thing or a game changer in my field. In this video, I'm gonna share with you why I'm so darn excited. So don't turn away because that starts right now. Hey. Howdy. And thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I am super excited about a new class of medicine called the Bertine tyrosine kinase inhibitors, or BTK inhibitors for short. In this video, I wanna unpack why I'm so darn excited. Now to set the stage, I need to talk about what causes damage in MS, why do people with MS get worse, and what the current medicines available to treat MS can and can't do. So let's jump in. Hey, real quick before we move on, do me a quick favor. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing so. So people impacted by MS can develop neurological disability from one of two ways. The first way is when they have a clinical attack and they don't fully recover. So as an example, God forbid you go blind in your left eye from optic neuritis, and when it recovers, it only recovers halfway. So now you have a visual deficit, you've accrued some disability because you didn't get all the way better. We call that raw or relapse associated worsening. The second way you can get bad in MS is from something called PIRA, progression independent from relapse activity. And this is where the human being develops difficulties with their neurological examination, except they haven't had an attack. Now here's the thing, both raw and PIRA are caused by an aberrant immune system. An aberrant immune system, both the adaptive arm of the immune system, the B and T cells that we talk about all the time, and the innate immune system is messed up in MS. But the innate immune system is something that we really haven't been able to affect until now. Also, the pathology of MS occurs in two locations, both in the periphery, in the bloodstream, and in the central compartment. Here's the kicker. Despite having 27 different formulations of medicines to treat MS today, it's May 2022 as I make this video, none of those drugs can directly impact the innate immune system. Many of them can impact the adaptive immune system, the B and the T cells, but they can't directly impact the innate immune system. They're not able to. Also, Many of the MS drugs that we use only work in the periphery and they can't cross into the central compartment in the CNS with the blood brain barrier. And so as you can see, there are some major limitations to using our current medicines and we need something ideally that works on both parts of the immune system and both the central and the peripheral compartments. Guess what? BTK inhibitors, they can do all that. So one of the things that's super exciting about a BTK inhibitor is that it's able to work in the central compartment, in the CNS, in the brain, and in the periphery. Also, it works on the adaptive immune system, and I'll tell you more about that in a second, and it works on the innate immune system directly for the very first time. So as we get into this, it's worthwhile to explain what a BTK inhibitor does. A BTK inhibitor, which is a small pill that you take, it inhibits this thing called BTK. What is BTK? Bruton's tyrosine kinase. Think of it as a machine in a factory. And not every factory has that machine. So only certain cells express BTK. The adaptive immune system, specifically the B cells, express BTK. But also the innate immune system has cells that express BTK. Microglia are an innate immune cell that we normally don't talk about because we've never been able to reach. And they're only located in the brain and spinal cord. They're only in the central compartment. And this innate immune cell in the central compartment expresses BTK. In the periphery, in the bloodstream, there's also two innate immune cells that express BTK, macrophages and monocytes. Now, when you give someone a BTK inhibitor, you inhibit the machine in all of those places, on the B cells, that's the adaptive immune system, and on the innate immune system, in the central compartment with microglia, and in the periphery with macrophages and monocytes. Pretty neat stuff. So let's talk about what BTK inhibitors do to each of those cells, starting with B cells, the cell that we're probably most familiar with. So we're dealing with the adaptive immune response, the B cells, 
These are cells that are murdered with other drugs like rituximab, ocrelizumab, ufatumumab. Those drugs, those B cell depleters, work by killing B cells. BTK inhibitors do something very, very different. They block B cell signaling without murder. That's a really cool trick. So when you take a BTK inhibitor, it binds to the B cell where the BTK is and breaks it. And so it doesn't work. Now that doesn't cause the cell to die and therefore we don't see an increased risk of infection, which is super awesome. But what happens is those B cells, they don't mature as quickly and they're not as functional. They, they can't work as well. And as a result, there are less auto-reactive antibodies that are produced. There's less auto-reactive cytokines that are produced. And so by giving a BTK inhibitor, you really dampen the behavior of the B cell without murder, something we haven't been able to do to date. So now let's think about microglia, those cells that we've never been able to touch before. First thing, as I mentioned earlier, it's part of the innate immune response. Second thing is you're, they're only found inside the brain, so in the central compartment. I sort of think of them as the Incredible Hulk. They just hang out and kind of do not very much, but when they get mad, they transform into something mean and nasty and they start eating things they're not supposed to. Now, when there is a pro-inflammatory milieu in the brain, so when there's kind of inflammation in the brain in the setting of MS, these microglia become activated and in a bad way. And because there's constant inflammation in the brain, you have these chronically activated microglia and they do things that we don't like. Number one, they release iron, which is a very inflammatory substance and can cause damage in the brain. Two, they develop oxidative stress so they can cause damage to nearby cells through oxidative stress measures. And number three, they can create nasty pro-inflammatory cytokines. So when these innate immune cells, the microglia become activated chronically, they chronically create bad problems leading to some of the damage we see in multiple sclerosis. Now, what's really, really cool is when you give a BTK inhibitor, remember the microglia express BTK, it blocks them and prevents them from doing all that stuff. So in a quick nutshell, I am super excited that we are developing a new class of medicine for MS, the BTK inhibitors. I am currently involved in several phase three clinical trials where we are studying these medicines in relapsing forms of MS, secondary progressive MS, and in primary progressive MS. These are drugs that do not appear to increase infection risk very much, which is awesome. They work on the adaptive immune system with the B cells in a very creative way without murder. And they work in the central compartment on microglia, the innate immune response, something we've never been able to do before. Until my next video or my next live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.